Let's get one thing straight. I love trolls. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but I've always found these children's toys bizarre and amusing. In fact, here's a troll I bought just the other day, pictured alongside a beer that I drank just the other day. So, I was never going to pass on the chance to own Super Troll Islands for the SNES when I came across it in a retro game shop. Just for the record, I know most people call them trolls, but to me they've always been trolls, and that's not going to change today. Super Troll Islands was developed by Millennium Interactive and released exclusively for Nintendo's 16-bit console in 1994. I had never heard of the game until the day I purchased it, but I was reassured by the sight of the familiar trolls of my youth, not those weird ones from the 2016 DreamWorks film starring Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake. But beyond the presence of trolls, I knew nothing about the game until I started playing it. As my copy of the game didn't come with a manual, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. You start the game with a team of four trolls, each with different coloured hair. You can choose any one troll to play as at any given time. I opted for the green haired troll and I was off. Here's the first level of the game. It didn't take me long to realise that by moving around the level I was bringing colour to the areas that I traversed, so I quickly moved to erase all of the grey in the world. Once I had achieved that, this happened. This essentially marks the successful completion of each level. A weird sun appears in the sky and scatters random items around the level for seemingly no reason. While I was still trying to come to terms with what had just happened, a level complete screen burst into view and the face of a troll peered out at me through my television screen, piercing my soul. This was a side of trolls that I had never seen before, and I wasn't sure I liked it. As you progress through the levels they become more elaborate, requiring some precise platforming and enemy evasion and combat. You're given a few different options when it comes to the combat itself. You can collect the random items scattered throughout the levels and use these as projectiles against enemies, with each enemy usually taking just one or two hits to be destroyed. You also have a limited use special attack that essentially turns your troll into an invincible whirlwind of hair for a short period of time. But the most bizarre form of attack is the cupcake. You're given a limited number of cupcakes that can be hurled at an enemy, covering them in cake. This temporarily paralyzes the enemy and they'll break free after a short time. That is, unless you rush up and eat them. That's right, the trolls eat their enemies. By far the biggest problem with the game is the speed at which the trolls move. These guys can go from 0 to 60 in less than a second and make Sonic the Hedgehog look like an amateur speedwalker by comparison. Holding the D-pad for any length at all will see the trolls accelerate to an uncontrollable speed that invariably plants you in areas of the level or directly into enemies that you never had the chance to see coming. When your troll does die, you'll be brought back to the troll's bedroom to choose from one of the remaining characters. Each troll is a little different. The blue haired troll can dive underwater, the pink haired one can jump really high, the green haired troll can take an extra hit of damage, and the orange haired guy can run even faster than the others, making him a total nightmare to control. I'm pretty sure the extra abilities like high jumping and diving are only really required if you're trying to collect every piece of treasure that's scattered around the level. Should all four trolls succumb to death, or sleep, you'll be given the chance to continue with all trolls revived, but continues are limited so you'll need to try and keep everyone safe for as long as possible to try and progress far into the game. Against my better judgement, I think there's actually the seed of a good game buried beneath this colourful mess of cupcakes and chaos. Moving around a level to bring greyed out areas to life while at the same time incorporating elements of classic 2D platforming feels different and unique. It's just a pity that the controls can make the game feel unfairly punishing and frustrating. Add to that the fact that the music will make you want to tear your ears off after the first 10 minutes and you've got a recipe for a game that's more off-putting than it needed to be. And just as an aside, the controls menu alluded to an ability to move the troll's hair by pressing the L and R buttons while an eerie version of the hokey pokey blared from my TV speakers. But I could never get this to work and fundamentally have no idea what this would have added to the gameplay. Super Troll Islands is a fun but flawed game that will no doubt overwhelm many gamers with its bizarre music and gameplay choices. Having spent a few hours with it, I still love trolls, but I'm beginning to realise that maybe I don't know as much about them and their ways as I thought I did. Thanks so much for watching, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll be back next week with another video from the Random Game Room.